So this is a detailed look at the mobile VR movement pack and how to use it in your project, how to use it with Gear VR, how to use it with Google VR, and uh, so a little bit further detail about each of the movement methods. So, what is it? It's the four demos. It's the five demos. There's five of them. How to use it. Hold all to, to rotate your head and control to tilt your head. And that is on each camera. So if I look on the uh, auto walk and I look at the main camera, there's a VR mouse look script. And VR mouse look only works in the editor. It doesn't do anything outside of the editor. So when you build it for Gear VR or Google VR, it doesn't do anything at all. But inside of the editor, it lets you, uh, when you hold down Alt on the keyboard, rotate your head and hold down Control, and you can tilt the head. So make sure that the VR camera has uh, main camera and the player has player. So you're going to see in all the prefabs and all the scenes that uh, the root VR main object has a tag player and the main camera has tag main camera. And then in Unity VR development, you cannot move the camera directly. You have to move the camera apparent object of the camera. So in other words, I couldn't add a camera on this root object. Uh, the main camera needs to be a child. There's more de details about that uh, on Unity's site. So that's why in each prefab you're going to see main camera as a child of the main uh, VR main object. So with that in mind, we're going to go into each individual one. The auto walk, uh, tap to start walking and tap to stop walking. And that works with the VR auto walk script. There's a speed variable here. So you could set the speed that you want the player to move at. And you can, of course, do that at runtime. So maybe you can incorporate a run, uh, run feature if you, if you expand the script a little bit more. Um, and so you need to have a character controller. You need to have the uh, VR auto walk script. Of course, you have to have the tag player and the tag. That's going to be the same in all projects going forward. And the only other thing here is the VR mouse look. So uh, if you don't want that, you can turn that off. And other than that, the character controller is going to respond to physics uh, or colliders. So you need to make sure that your terrain or your ground has a collider on it. And if it does, then uh, then that's just going to work. So the next one here is look walk. And so that's where you look down to start walking and you look back up to stop walking. And so that one's very, very similar uh, where there's a speed. But here there's a toggle angle and then the default is 30. So what that responds to is the X rotation value on the main camera. So you see that it's at 13 right now and as I rotate my head down, it's going to go up to 30, and once it is 30, it's going to start moving. And it moves anywhere between 30 and 90, where 90 is straight down. So if you're looking anywhere past the um, toggle angle and 90 degrees straight down, you will be moving. So if I want to walk a little bit sooner, I could put that to 20. And then when uh, the main camera's X rotation gets to 20, it'll start moving me. And then, of course, it has the same speed function on how fast you want to move. Set up the same way with the character controller, and you have to add the VR look walk script. Camera is set up the same way. And uh, in all the scenes, you have to have the event system, even the auto walk. And what the event system does in all scenes is it takes input from the button. So, um, even the gaze input where you look onto an object that uses pointer enter and pointer exit so even without touching a button we still need to have the event system and it needs to have a gaze input module if you're not using google vr you can use the vr gaze input module that i included if you are using v, uh, google vr you could use uh, google's gaze input module so other than the, than the event system which is in all scenes we just need the character controller the auto lock script and that's up and working. So next up, we'll look at the Bluetooth controller. And the Bluetooth controller gets the same thing, just a character controller with the Bluetooth controller script. And everything's set up the same way. 
and it has the event system and that takes the input from the project settings input and if we look at the axis under horizontal and vertical there's two different ones one of them comes from the key or mouse button and the other one down here comes from the joystick axis so the joystick axis horizontal and vertical is what the Bluetooth controller script is using so of course it works in the unity editor with WASD or the arrow keys as well so while you're moving you can you can look around and you're moving that direction it should work with most Bluetooth controllers but again not all Bluetooth controllers are gonna map uh, horizontal and vertical mapping into unity and you might have to look into your controller and uh, see what mapping it's sending out into unity and adjust the script to use that um, instead of watching for the horizontal and input which it currently looks for so pretty simple uh, demo for the Bluetooth controller uh, getting a little more complicated when we get into the nav mesh example in the nav mesh example uh, you're going to have to bake a navigation mesh onto your objects. Um, so I've already done that here via the bake tab. And there's lots of good uh, Unity tutorials out there on how to do nav meshes. So check those out. But I've just a basic scene here with a terrain and a plane and a couple cubes. So you can see the nav mesh is baked appropriately. And the way this one works, of course, is when you look anywhere when your gaze is looking at the ground or any object with a collider on it and you tap on the button uh, you'll move to that location and so in order for this to work you're gonna have to put a navigation agent onto the VR main object and the main camera needs to have a physics raycaster so anytime you add a physics raycaster, it's always a good idea to perhaps add a dot in the middle of the screen so the player knows exactly what they're looking at. Uh, so for an example of how to do that with this project, you can look at the Google Cardboard or the Google VR integration video, and that the Google VR includes a dot prefab. So if you bring Google Cardboard into this package, you'll instantly have the, that dot. So but without it, this works. You just you kind of know where you're looking and you tap and you walk in that direction and it uses the navigation agent to determine where to move to so you need to have that nav mesh agent the event system and the terrain or the plane for example that we can walk on you need to make sure it has a collider and then add the VR walkable surface script to that so the plane because I can walk on that it needs to have the VR walkable surface other than that, everything's set up out of the box, and it just works. And then the last one to look at is the Waypoint demo. And uh, the Waypoints are very simple. I've already explained them in the previous video, but you can add, use the custom inspector there to remove Waypoints. Uh, you can add connected waypoints and it shows that they're connected with the green line so I have three waypoints that are connected to each other here the one in the middle is connected to both the first and the last one and so the gaze timer is how long it, you look at the waypoint before moving to it and then the player speed is how fast you're going the offset is where the player will move to and the reason why is because these waypoints center point is right at the middle and I don't want the players object which is on the ground to move to the center because then the player will no longer be on the ground so I can set an offset of negative one and that moves the player down right there onto the ground where where he should be so the same thing if I were to say three here when I move to that waypoint the player is going to go up into the air three units above the center point so that's what the player offset is connected waypoints is a list of uh, waypoints that are connected to this one and you can reorder them you can you can add uh, waypoints manually if you want to and drag them in in this manner you can delete them 
and this is the prefix for adding new waypoints so if this if this was the end of the town and it was going into the canyon you can rename your waypoints here to canyon and it's going to start naming uh naming them canyon so that is the custom inspector all the waypoint objects in the scene need to have a tag waypoint so initially you're not going to have that you need to click add tag and you can click plus and you need to add waypoint here and so back in the back into here it says on define we need to make sure that it says waypoint on the objects that are waypoints there's a waypoint prefab in the prefabs folder that's already set up for you and the way a waypoint needs to be set up is it needs to have the VR waypoint script it needs to have a collider that the player's gaze is going to respond to and as the child you can do visual component whether that's a mesh renderer or maybe it's a particle effect uh, you can put that here as the child and if you add an animation controller and on your animation controller if you add a bool of pointer enter and set up your conditions to respond to that bool you can have two animations that play one plays when you're not looking at it and the other one plays when you are looking at it so here it plays a spinning animation when I'm not looking at a waypoint and when I look at a waypoint it switches to the uh, bouncing up and down animation So the visual component needs to be a child of the waypoint object. And if you set up with a waypoint script and a collider and give it some type of visual component here, uh, you're ready to go. It needs the waypoint tag. In the documentation, it lists which scripts are needed for which uh, method. So if you only want to use nav mesh, then you only need to import VR walkable surface scripts and you can ignore all the other ones when you're importing so if you just want to use waypoints you do need to import these five scripts to make the waypoint system work the other ones only have one script apiece the waypoints a little bit more complicated because it has the custom inspector target platforms if you're going to gear VR this is pretty much ready to go because it just uses a regular camera uh, so if you were to go into build settings and player settings and you were to put virtual reality supported button here and build that for Android you would have a working Gear VR project as long as you included your device signature file which is included which is required so if you're building for Google VR the next video covers that Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully this makes your game a lot easier to make.